So hi everyone, welcome to this video on the introduction to time series and working with time series as well as the rudimentary concepts behind it. So uh, time series data or the approach that we'll use for time series is relatively more econometric and more empirical than let's say typically other courses that may discuss it in passing. So time series data. For an economist or a financial person, it's incredibly important for you to try and understand how to use time series data. For the very simple reason that time series data is the most common type of data that you would typically see around. So what is time series data? Well, it's probably obvious to most of you, but it's generally, say we have a variable y sub t, that variable y sub t, so that variable y, varies across time or across t. So it's generally one cross-sectional unit. Say, for example, that y t is, say, that could be GDP of, uh, say, um, the Philippines over a period of time. Say, let's say it's from 2000 until, say, 2020. So that's an example of time series data. So as I said, if you think about the notion of data in general, the most probable thing that you, would, that you would try to visualize first is something like time series data, since it's the most common. Okay, now, while time series data may be abundant and in relatively good supply, dealing with time series data can often be a pain, at least econometrically. For one thing, a lot of time series data have different frequencies. So you have data points that are collected annually. You have some that are collected quarterly or reported quarterly, such as GDP here. Then you have some data points that are monthly, such as inflation. You even have indicators that are by the second or by the minute or by even the millisecond, such as stock prices and asset prices and so on. So uh, there are varying frequencies. But uh, the real pain is that there are a lot of assumptions that we have to impose on time series uh, for it to behave properly when we model it empirically. So it's, it may be a pain uh, empirically and econometrically, but it's still important for us to try and tackle it because it's really uh, a good starting point for how we're going to try to understand the concept of forecasting as we move along. Okay, so one thing we need to understand first when we're dealing with time series data is generally how it looks like. So let's have an example of how it looks like. So here in this graph, we have uh, the recent, so there's a currently an epidemic, uh, a pandemic going on right now called COVID-19. And uh, th there's a, it's, it's nice to analyze how this sort of looks like. So we have here on the x-axis, we have dates. So we have dates on this axis here. And then we on the y-axis, we have uh, the values, in this case, cases. So we have cases, and then we have dates here. Okay, so as we can see, um, in the Philippines, at least, the first case of COVID-19 came around late January and then sort of uh, ascended and peaked recent, uh, ongoing. So I, the latest data point I have was... March 23rd, so it's quite high up there, reaching around 140 cases, and that's probably going to increase over the coming days. So this is an example of time series data. You have one cross-sectional unit, in this case, the Philippines' COVID-19 cases, and it's spread throughout time. The frequency of, these, of this specific data set is it's daily data, but as I said, the frequency could be quarterly, could be monthly, could be daily, could be weekly and so on. So there are varying frequencies how we do with it. Okay, so let's start first with a concept we call, okay, there's a concept we like to call, okay, stationarity. Okay, so let me write it down, stationarity. So stationarity, okay, there are generally two types of stationary. First is called strict, and then the second is called weak. So for the purposes of this sort of series, we'll just discuss how the weak concept of stationary goes. And uh, in in discussing stationary, let's, let's discuss it with um, first its general terms, then let's go into it one by one. So uh, a series is considered to be stationary when it has it displays three properties. 
So the first is that it has a constant mean. Okay, a series has a constant mean. The second is that the series has a constant variance. And the third is that the series has a constant covariance. Okay. And let's go through each of these uh, individually. So the first one, when we say constant mean, so that's, say for example, so let yt be a time series variable. So essentially, let this be a series. So we denote time series variables with the subscript t for the simple reason that it varies through time. So it could have different values through time. So a particular series, okay, a particular time series, a particular variable under time series is considered stationary if first it has a constant mean. Mathematically, we denote that as the expected value of yt is equal to some mu, so some constant number. Okay, for all, for all t. Okay, so it has the same mean across the series. So that first mathematical form we see there implies constant mean. Okay, so what does it mean when it has a constant mean? So when you try and uh, visualize it, it looks something like this. Say you have the value of the series here. Okay, and then say you have something, this is time. Okay, it has... A constant mean if, let's say, let's draw the series. So say this is my series, okay? This is an example of a stationary series. If you try and draw a line that connects the points as best you can, it's like this, okay? So that's the line that tries to connect the points as best as we can. And if you notice, that line is flat. So it doesn't change for any value of t. It's the same for this t1 here. It's the same for this t2. Same for T3. So that mean there is constant. It's mu. It's the same for all periods of time. So in this case, that's what we mean by a series being a having or having a constant mean rather. The second is that the, uh, the, that the series has a constant variance. So what does that mean? It means that mathematically, the expected value of yt, so that's the series value minus its mean, okay, times that same thing, minus its mean, is just some constant factor sigma squared, so which is less than infinity. So we mean by this is, uh, recalling basic statistics, the, the first property suggests constant mean. We also suggest here for a series to be stationary, it also has a constant variance, okay? So uh, the last one, okay, the last one that we have is called constant covariance. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, constant uh, autocovariance rather. So this is, I forgot to add, this is autocovariance, my apologies. When we say a constant autocovariance, it looks something like this, and then let's try and explain it. So that's the expected value, y, t1. So say this is the value of y at a certain time period, say t1, minus mu. Okay, then we have here y, t2 minus mu this is just equal to some parameter gamma okay t2 minus t1 for any two time periods okay so let's try and get this a bit okay this assumption suggests something called constant autocovariance right and uh first let's define what the helen autocovariance is so it's in some ways how okay how some why okay so how some time series variable relates to its previous values okay so that's what an autocovariance is so for the case of a series which is stationary the way that y relates to its to its past values should only depend on the difference between the two time periods, so that's T1 and T2. So that the covariance between the present and the past value of it is the same as the covariance between any present and past value. So what does that mean? Okay, so say you have, uh, say you have something that looks like this. 
Okay, say you have the expected value, say you're at yt, okay, minus expected value yt, okay. So we know that this one, okay, if our series has a constant mean, this is equal to mu. Okay, that's equal to mu. And then say we're going we're gonna to try to prove this assumption a bit. So we have y t minus s. So that's any time period before y t. Okay, so any time period before y t minus the expected value of y t at that time period, y t minus s. Okay, this is equal to gamma s. Okay, now, if you recall, if the series has a constant mean, its mean at any time period, at any time, so it relates back to our first assumption, is just mu. Okay, it's constant, it has a constant mean. So this thing here reduces first to expected value yt minus mu. Okay, yt minus s minus mu. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to the thing we pointed out earlier. Okay, so because of that assumption that two things here are, uh, that there is a constant mean, okay, that difference here, okay, that difference that is summarized here in this autocovariance function is constant whether you have this to be 3, 2, say 4, uh, 4, and then 3, or 5, and then 4. It's roughly going to be that same, um, that same difference. So it's also going to be relatively constant, same as the mean. Okay, so that, that's the relationship that we're going to try to imply here. So that the difference uh, as to how y relates to its previous values is the same even across multiple time periods. When you're comparing two different time periods, say 5 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 3 to, uh, 2 to 1, it's the same. It has the same constant trend as you see with constant mean.